every grain. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. You know, that's something very interesting about being a Chinoy, probably, because um, being a super Chinese would probably tell you or would probably run a business na, no, ako lang. I'm going to be the CEO and I'm not going to pass this position to anyone else except to my kids. That's a super Chinese mindset, I would say. And a little bit of, you know, Filipino mindset is you have to learn to trust people. You have to learn how to delegate tasks. You have to also give chances to other people. And not because you guys are not related by blood, it means you cannot trust him or her. Yeah, so it's a combination of both Chinese mindset and the Filipino mindset. And that makes me who I am today. Hi, my name is Avin Ong. I'm the founder and CEO of the Friendly Group of Companies. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart is true to me because I was born here in the Philippines, but I am a full-blooded Chinese. My, my parents came here in the Philippines way back 1970s. Growing up in a Chinoy house, I must say it's a little bit challenging. When I was a kid, my mom was very strict to us. We can only speak Mandarin or Fukien at home. She wanted us to never forget our root as a Chinese in the Philippines. My father died when I was still inside my mom's womb. It was very difficult um, because um, we don't have much money. We were assembling hangers um, at house. I have to go to the school every day. And then once I'm back at around 5 p.m., I will have to sit down on the floor and help our mother and my sisters um, pack all the hangers. We were experiencing a lot of financial difficulties. So even the food, for example, um, she would just buy an orange and then we will have to split it into five just so everyone in the family can have a slice of the orange. It was summer and at that time we have already moved from Manila to Caloocan City. We moved there to open a kitchenware. So one day I told my mom and my sister, is it possible to allot a small space in front of our store just so I can sell something. So they immediately said yes. I bought some ice and then I started purchasing powders, chocolate powders, vanilla powders, all these things from Divisoria. So every day at around 2 p.m., I would start setting up my kiosk and then I would start selling fruit shakes. Business did not turn out well. I did not earn money from that business. And what did I learn? It encouraged me or it pushed me to become a risk taker. So every day in friendly group of companies, I have to make very risky decisions. I have to make very aggressive moves. And it's because of all these experiences over the past years that made me a risk taker. I would say ever since we were brainwashed by our mother that we should not just settle. My mom would always tell us to persevere, to work harder, to do the right things, basically all those values in order to live the life that we want. It's actually very funny because growing up, I wanted to be a doctor. And at some point, I wanted to be a lawyer. I decided to become a businessman um, during college because I feel like being a doctor would require a lot of time when it comes to studying and my family can't wait for that. And I took up BS in mathematics in business applications. I did not take up business courses yeah, because I always believe that business related um, decisions can actually be learned during a dinner or a lunch with friends with successful businessmen.
It's actually very interesting that during my three years stay in Deutsche Bank, my sisters and my family would push me to resign. They wanted me to resign as early as possible because they would always tell me, you cannot be an employee forever. You have to build your own company. You have to build your own business empire because you're a Chinese. Imagine yourself, you know, enjoying your stay working in a corporate world and then your sisters and your mother, your family in general would push you to magresign ka na, magresign ka na. So the, the reason why I finally resigned is because um, I finally got a promotion and that promotion was a recognition by the top management that I, I was good enough. And right after my resignation, I was tasked to work with my brother-in-law. It was very difficult because at that time, you know, coming from a bank with so much controls in place, yeah, with so much numbers, Excel file, I was so passionate to, you know, launching new things. Like, parang, I want to change this process. I want to do this. I want to do to do that, this will um, make the business, your business, better. Sabi nila, no, 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 it's been working like this for the longest time and it worked, so why change it? It's good that I'm stubborn. So after a few months, I decided to, to leave that company. They respected my decision. When we were having dinner, it was very random. I told them, um, bakit hindi na lang tayo magtayo ng restaurant? My sisters told me, oh sure, we can give it a try because at that time, we thought running and managing a restaurant would be so easy. If you are an outsider, if you are not coming from the food service industry, you would think that running a restaurant is not that difficult. My sister said, yes, um, pwede kaming maging investors mo. You manage that restaurant business. So I decided to talk to the chef, the Japanese chef. I decided to buy their menu. And then finally, after six months of preparation, learning all those things without a consultant, we establish and open our very first restaurant in Quezon City, Sandaya Yakiniko. At 24 years old, that was actually my third business already. And after a few months, I felt like something is missing. Parang, I want to build a bigger empire. I want to build a business empire. And I just can't be that CEO if I don't have an MBA degree. I opened the website of Ateneo Graduate School of Business and I applied for their MBA degree. 2014 was a very challenging year for me because I was running, managing a restaurant, and at the same time, I started taking up, taking up my MBA degree in the Ateneo Graduate School of Business in Raquel. I was a very hands-on restaurant manager. So every day, I would open the store. I was the key holders, typical Chinese, you know. <laughs> you cannot leave the keys to other people. You have to hold it yourself. I opened the doors of my restaurant every morning at around 9 a.m and then we would start operating that restaurant until um, 5 p.m. And at 5 p.m., I will have to rush, drive all the way to Raquel to attend my MBA classes from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and the restaurant closed at 10 p.m. I will have to run all the way from Makati to Quezon City to close the shop. All the staff, they were all waiting for me. Why it's so important for me to be hands-on? I think there are two reasons. First reason is I was taught not to easily trust anyone. And the second reason why I think I was very hands-on is I want to learn all these things from cashiering to opening stores to running a restaurant, doing inventory management, serving the customers. At some point, I was a waiter, you know, I served food. When we decided to finally open our very first restaurant, I was asked by, by my sisters, so what would be the name of our company? And after, after a few hours, I told them, I want to name our company as Fredly Food and Beverages Inc. The reason why we are all here today is mainly because of our dad and our mom. So the name of my father is Alfred. So we got the Fred. And the name of my mother is Shirley. So we got the Lee. So that's why we established Fredly Food and Beverages Inc. 
if you look at the name Fredly, you would see a green color that looks like letter A. Yeah, that's actually um, the four of us because um, our names are Anna, Annie, Annaline, and Avin. So all starts with letter A. We never thought Fredly Group of Companies would become this big to be totally honest with you. I was just doing everything that I can to run the business to make sure that it's gonna be profitable. We were approached by this Singaporean agency offering us the franchise rights of a hot pot concept. Our first restaurant was already profitable. So I told the board of directors, or technically my sisters, I told them that, um, do you wanna consider expansion? Do you wanna open a Shabu Shabu restaurant here in the Philippines? And everyone said yes. so funny that, you know, everyone is a fan of Shabu Shabu and Yakiniku. So everywhere we go, we always crave for Shabu Shabu. So it was very easy for us to immediately say yes. We visited Japan, we went through the bidding process, and luckily, we got the franchise rights of Shabu Shabu Ichiban. But now, um, we rebranded it to Nabe Japanese Izakaya and Hot Pot. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center PG Flex Linoleum and Maruyama Tarpaulin Evergreen Cereal AgriPro Premier Nutrition Incorporated Global Diesel and GU Engineering Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines your long-term agriculture partner. Japan Parts Bearing Corporation now open in Caloocan. Pinturado Seliado Protectado Sigurado AquaGuard Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint. Share your special moments with us at Hilton Manila. MTN Aesthetic Supplies Incorporated. Wonderful Trading. Unity, your testing specialist. Bavin, the fast charging expert. Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Philippine Xinjiang General Association Incorporated. Grand Family Association of the Philippines Incorporated. Federation of Filipino Chinese Alumni Association Incorporated. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nung Family. Enrique Chua. Li Pue Chin. Chua Beng Teng. Hong Wen Bing. Albert Ko. Steven Sia. Rosalina Yasai. Thomas Kua. Conchita Go. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. When my sister traveled to Macau, she got to try a cup of milk tea from Macau Imperial Tea in Macau. So when she tried it, she said, Oh, it tastes so good. Baka pwede natin dalhin sa Pilipinas. She messaged me and then she invited me to Macau to talk to the principal of Macau Imperial Tea in Macau. We are all very aggressive. We are all go-getters, I must say. So immediately, we book a ticket, and then we, we visited Macau again, this time with me, with my sister, and then we spoke to the principal of Macau Imperial Tea. We were told that um, there, there were several bidders um, bidding for, for Macau Imperial Tea here in the Philippines, but because that we are quite young, and knowing our family background, um, the principal wanted to give us the franchise rights of Macau Imperial Tea here in the Philippines. So after four months, we opened our very first shop in Banawe, Quezon City. That was June 12, 2017. I was the marketing manager back then, but I already have my HR staff. I already have an accounting staff. Yeah, something like that. So the organizational structure was like, um, I think at most five people in the office. Yeah, you know, running Japanese restaurants, um, yakiniku, shabu shabu concepts, and uh, milk tea 
and one milk tea shop that's um, that's opening soon during that time. And we never thought that it's gonna be you know um, supported or well loved by the Filipinos. Alam ko parang at 8 a.m. we were already there waiting for customers to come. We have this opening promotion, and at around 9:30 a.m. we were seeing people lining up already. And then during the afternoon, we were surprised that you know the parking lot is full. There were so many customers lining up to the point that I have to clean the tables, I have to go to the toilet, get the garbage, get the toilet papers. We were so busy to the point that every time I reach home, pag matutulog na ako, I would always dream about our business operations. I feel like I was saying in my dream, ah, like, thank you for coming po, 45 degree, um, para mainom niyo po yung cream cheese and the milk tea together. Yeah, so that was my line kasi from 9 a.m. to 12 midnight for seven days. During those days, um, I told myself that, okay, looks like Macau Imperial Tea is gonna grow big here in the Philippines. But I never thought that it's going to be the number one milk tea chain in the Philippines. I've been interviewed by a lot of magazines and teachers. They were all asking me about um, what's the key ingredients to success. My answer is always quite simple. It's hard work. It's perseverance. Do the right things at the right time. When we talk about right time, there's no such thing as perfect timing. Because I have a lot of friends, they would always tell me na, Avin, I admire you a lot. How to be you po. I want to also, I want to establish my own business empire as well. But the problem is, they keep talking about it, they keep sharing about it, but they are not taking actions to achieve all those things that they want in life. There is no such thing as perfect timing because the perfect timing is actually right now. I think PR 101 is quite important. Public relations. You know, Chinese people or Chinoy in general, they are very good in public relations. When an auntie or an uncle sent you something at home, usually, Chinoy would send back something after a few days. That's how we do it. You know, we don't just thank someone for sending something, but we usually send something else in return to thank them back. I think PR 101 was quite helpful. You know, my training um, in public relations was quite, was quite helpful being a Chinoy um, because um, in the food service industry, public relations is very important. You do public relations with the malls, with the landlords, with the customers, yeah, with a lot of people, with suppliers, you know. So um, because of the training as a Chinoy, I was able to handle myself and handle other people quite well in different settings. I think everyone would agree that Chinoy or Chinese people in general are quite masipag or machaga. I think because of all those traits, because I was trained to be a hardworking person, that contributed a lot also or significantly to the success that we are having right now. So um, what's next for me? What's next for Fredly Group of Companies? Um, to be honest, we want to go IPO by 2025. So for the past two years, 2020 and 2021, even if we are experiencing pandemic, we've been working um, towards that goal. So we want to go IPO by 2025. Plan for myself, to be honest with you, um, I hope to retire early, earlier than 60. So I've been telling this to everyone who is directly reporting to me in the company that they have to step up, they have to work harder, because one day I hope somebody else can replace me as the CEO of the company. And I would love to, you know, to just sit down in the, in the board, you know, um, and just work as a board of director. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Evergreen Cereal. AgriPro, Premier Nutrition Incorporated. Global Diesel and GU Engineering. Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation. Ford Tractor Philippines. Your long-term agriculture partner. Pinturado, selyado, protectado, sigurado. Aquaguard elastomeric waterproofing paint. Share your special moments with us at Hilton Manila. 
Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Philippine Xinjiang General Association Incorporated. Philippine Long Tong Hai Fraternity Incorporated and Philippine Long Tong Hai Chamber of Commerce Incorporated, President Raymond Uy. Philippine Xinjiang Longhu Association and Philippine Xinjiang Longhu Chamber of Commerce Incorporated. Philippine Chinese Commerce and Industry Overseas Association Incorporated. Philippine Xinlian Association. Overseas Chinese Alumni Association of the Philippines. Alejandro Ko, Jimmy C, Nang Family, Chua Bang Tang, Hong Wen Bing, Albert Ko, Steven Sia, Rosalina Yasai, Jaime Lim, Victor Chua, Sherwin Choi. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. I've been dancing for, I've been dancing for around 17 years. Now, uh, it's been my lifestyle and it's something that I pursued when I was very young. And my ballet teacher, Miss Effie Nanias, was the one who instilled to me delayed gratification and how working each and every day allows you to grow into what you want to become in the future. Why I had to sacrifice that fun part in order to get my dream. Why did I have to sacrifice uh, my childhood for uh, something I wanted so badly? Just to be a great dancer and to be a great ballerina. But I, real I realized only many, many years after that, that sacrifice was so crucial because if ever, I picked going out to a party rather than going to class and rehearsal, I wouldn't be here today. So the late gratification is very important for success in any industry you're in. I think in delayed gratification, may value siya in the sense na you have to work first bago mo ma-enjoy yung whatever that you want to enjoy. I get that. With that being said, kung work, 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 work lang yung inaatupag mo, and you don't give yourself some time to enjoy your mga hobbies mo, time with your family, time with your loved ones, it will take a toll on your mental health. I think there has to be a balance between delayed gratification and instant gratification because I don't want to be the type of person who will work myself to the bone and just hope that I live to 75 and 80 and then just enjoy the fruit of my labor. How am I gonna go skydiving at 80? I don't quite like the term delayed gratification. I think it is having a vision. It's being goal-oriented and, it, and it's also having a clear goal. You know, it's not just like, but I want to be rich, period. You have a, a goal on how you're going to achieve something. And, and you, you're willing to put in the time and the effort and the sacrifice to reach that goal. It's always good to achieve a lot at an early age. My thoughts on delayed gratification is that it's actually a thing for Chinoy people. I believe that Chinoy are so focused or planning is so important for Chinoy people. I actually remember uh, a scene in the movie Crazy Rich Asians. They were having this conversation that, you know, Chinese people they are all about you know, working and planning for the second generation or for the generations to come. We work so hard because we want to enjoy life with our kids, with our second generation later. I think that's my thought of delayed gratification. While you are young, while you are still energetic, while you, you can still do it, while you can still run you know, from one place to another, while you can still carry a lot of things, you do it right now. So a modern Chinoy for me is someone who can who is capable of expanding the business, you know, running the business with um, ex with good exposures um, from other countries, with learning from other businessmen, and doing it right, making it big. So that's a modern Chinoy for me. 
I always believe in the saying, the eye has to travel. When you travel, when you get the exposure from other countries, when you learn new things from the other countries, we can always apply it here to make you know, the food service industry here in the Philippines better. Eliminate the mindset of you have to do everything on your own. You cannot trust people. Yeah. So um, delegating tasks to other people, I think that's also one of the things that would define a modern Chinoy. Being independent is very important because you have to explore opportunities, options on your own, and you have to, in the process of you know exploring options and opportunities, you would be able to know yourself better. You would be able to know your strengths and weaknesses better. We live in a world full of distractions. No one is going to discipline you except yourself. So self-discipline for me is very important because as early as you wake up, you have to list down the things that you wanted to do today, you want to achieve today. And you have to discipline yourself every minute of that day um, in order for you to complete all those task lists. And I actually call it tough love because being tough on yourself is a very lovely gesture. I would probably encourage them to get out from their comfort zone. Because you know, Chinoy in the Philippines, most of them, or majority of them, um, they all have family businesses. And probably their parents would push them to, you know, take up business courses because after graduation, you're gonna run our businesses. Yeah. And right after graduation, probably they had no choice but to, you know, enter into their family business, run their business, and do everything their parents ask them to do. Yeah. I would probably advise them to, you know, be stubborn at some point. Do something else on your own. Fail for as long as you can still afford it. So while we are still so young, while we are still so energetic, it's okay to fail. We have to work really hard. We have to explore our options. We have to explore opportunities in order for us to find out what we really want in life. It's very important to be honest. It's very important to be transparent um, because all those skills, all those talents or knowledge, you can always learn it. You can always learn it from people. You can always research about it. But integrity is something deep inside you. And it's something that you have to always practice in order to get the trust or gain trust from other people. Sabi nga nila, it takes years to build trust and it takes mere seconds to break it. Integrity is somehow related to your reputation and you know how important reputation is to any businessman. For more information about today's episode, visit www.chinoy.tv And subscribe to our YouTube channel for full episodes of Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Presenting the Chinoy TV Podcast your one-stop source to everything Chinoy. On this podcast, we will dig deep and understand the Chinese-Filipino culture. We'll put a face to the deep-rooted meaning of being a Chinoy, defined by their struggles, shared history, and successes. Follow Chinoy TV Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast fix. This is the Chinoy TV Podcast. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy was brought to you by Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice, our Filipino farmers' hard work and dedication in every grain. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Chinoy TV would like to thank. I came back to the Philippines 1998 with only 3,000 pesos. I have used up all my savings in the U.S. to buy the necessary instruments to start a surgery practice. We've made dentistry very glamorous, very fashionable, and sexy. I'm Dr. Steve Mark Tan, President and CEO of the GAOC Group of Companies.